Have you ever wondered what is going to happen to a subscription when it's supposed to renew in a year from now? Or maybe you wanted to test some mailer logic that's supposed to send an email when you receive the invoice.created event in a month from now. With the launch of the new test clock object, you can now simplify testing your billing integrations by simulating how objects change through time. This means, for instance, that you won't actually have to wait a full year to see what happens if invoice payment fails for a renewal that is a, an annual renewal. So let's jump into the example and take a look. So we're going to use curl in today's demo to show how to get started with test clocks. But before we do anything, I'm going to jump into the Stripe dashboard, grab my API key and store that secret API key in an environment variable that will simplify the writing of our API requests. So we're going to start by creating a brand new test clock, which you can do by hitting the uh, V1 test helpers test clocks endpoint. And a test clock allows you to specify a time in the future or in the past. This is gonna be the frozen time that is associated with the clock when it's first started. We're gonna create this brand new clock and we're gonna freeze its time on November 1st, 2021 by passing this Unix timestamp. In the response, we see that test clock returned to us. We wanna note its ID so that we can attach it to a customer in the next step. The clock object is how we're gonna advance forward in time. It's worth noting that once we freeze this time, we can't move a clock's time backwards, and we'll take a look at that error message in a little bit. So how do we actually use the clock to simulate objects moving through time? Well, we need to attach the test clock to one or more objects. Customers are the most common object that you're gonna associate with a test clock, but you can also create new quotes with a test clock reference. Note that you can only create new objects with reference to a test clock. There isn't a way as of this recording to attach a test clock to an existing object. All right, so we're gonna create a customer here. We're gonna pass in its email as Jenny Rosen. We'll pass in a payment method, PM card visa. This is just the test string for that 4242 card. We're also gonna set invoice settings default payment method to that PM card visa. That will make it so that when we create any subscriptions in the future, it will use a valid card by default. Here's where the magic happens. We need to pass in the test clock ID. So we'll specify the test clock and pass in the ID of the clock that we just created. And you can create several test, co test clocks on your account. All right, we'll grab reference to that customer ID. If we head over to the dashboard and open up that customer and look at the detail view for the customer in the dashboard, you'll see this new banner at the top that tells us that a customer is associated with the test clock. We see this is a clock object in a simulation. And we also see the time that the clock is frozen to. We don't have any subscriptions yet, so let's go create one. From the Stripe dashboard, I'm gonna head over to my prices so that I can grab a recurring price. Note this price object is a monthly price and we'll use that to create our subscription. So we're gonna send an API call to uh, the V1 subscriptions endpoint, passing in the customer that we just created with the test clock and the price ID for uh, the line item that will represent this recurring price. Notice that we didn't need to pass in or specify the test clock when we create the subscription. By passing in a customer, this new subscription will be directly associated with that same test clock. If we jump to that subscription object in the dashboard, again, we see a banner at the top telling us that this is a object that is in a clock simulation. And again, we also see the frozen time for that object. Now that we have a customer and a subscription associated with a test clock, we can try advancing the, the clock into the future by changing its time. So we're gonna use the ID of the test clock and call the, the test clock advance endpoint passing in the new frozen time. Let's try advancing the clock one full year to November 2022. Notice that we got back an error letting us know that we can only advance up to two intervals in the future. Because our subscription is associated with a monthly price, that means we can only advance at, at most two months into the future. So our frozen clock is tied to November 1st. The farthest we can advance is January 1st of 2022. Let's now advance the clock to January 1st, 2022 and see what happens. Notice that in the response, we see that the test clock is advancing and it does take a little time for a test clock to advance as it's firing off all of the webhook events and logs and API calls that are required to simulate the changes that happen through time for that test clock. 
Depending on how many objects are associated with your test clock, it could take upward of 10 to 20 seconds for this to complete. To track the state of your test clock, you can either pull to retrieve the clock object, or you can listen for test clock webhook events that fire, letting you know when the clock settles. After refreshing the dashboard a few times, we can see that the subscription has advanced. We've had several invoices that were finalized, and ultimately, um, payment was collected throughout the period between November and January 1st. One thing that might be confusing when you're looking for objects in the dashboard is they will be tied to that specific time of the clock. So if you're looking at your customer objects in chronological order, these customers that are created associated with test clocks will actually appear lower down in the list. All right, next let's try advancing the clock backwards in time. And notice that we received this error that just tells us that we cannot go backwards in time with a, a test clock. Let's try one more thing. Let's set our subscription to be canceled at the period end in the future. We'll pass in our subscription ID and update the subscription to cancel at period end. Then we could advance the clock one more time to see that the state of the subscription is ultimately canceled. After you're done with all your testing, you can delete your test clock and all the related customers and subscriptions will be deleted in one API call. By default, test clocks will automatically expire after 30 days and your test clock objects will be cleaned up. At the time of this recording, you could create up to six customers that are associated with a test clock. So as a quick recap, we created a new test clock and froze the time at November 1st, 2021. Then we created a new test customer associated with that test clock. Next, we subscribed that customer to a monthly recurring price in advanced time to simulate the events that would fire between November 1 and January to confirm that invoices are created successfully. We also saw that we can advance the clock several times, but we can't move backward in time. We also learned how to delete clocks. We recognize that testing your payments integration is challenging. Test Clocks is just one of many new testing tools that we're excited to announce and we hope that you'll love. Now you can simulate those billing scenarios and time travel forward in time and see what your customers will see. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.